Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 7th, 2019 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. DDA today wrote up a quick note regarding an issue that Xavier ran into when he looked at these malicious UDF files recently. Part of these files were actually in UTF-16 encoding. UTF-16 uses at least two bytes per character. And with that, what you typically end up with, if it's ASCII text, one of the bytes is zero followed by the ASCII code. So not terribly difficult to decode this and make sense of it, but the DDA is going over some of the tools that you have available in order to actually decode and then read the data more easily. One set of vulnerabilities that is really sort of taking off is HTTP services starting on the loopback interface to interact with various software packages. Latest example, VMware Fusion. VMware Fusion is setting up this listener on port 8698. And by connecting to it, you were able to actually execute arbitrary commands on the guest without authentication. Since uh, these are WebSocket and REST APIs that are being exposed here, all you need is some JavaScript so an attacker could execute arbitrary code if the victim is visiting a malicious website and loads the respective JavaScript. VMware patched this issue late in March, so about a month ago, and the actual proof of concept exploit was released also late March, but really didn't run into this until now. So I figured I'll still mention it because this is a real simple exploit. So make sure that you are patched if you're running VMware Fusion. And then again, this kind of vulnerabilities, we just have seen it with Dell last week. And with everybody moving to these sort of HTTP REST and WebSocket interfaces, we'll probably see a lot more. The way VMware fixed this is that it now requires an authentication token. This token is regenerated whenever you are starting up a VMware. The user really doesn't have to know this token. They're also now enforcing an origin header. So that cannot be faked with JavaScript and should prevent exploitation. Now, one of the complaints that we always have with users is weak passwords. And then, of course, attackers are well known for actually gaining access to systems that use default and weak passwords. Well, you would think that attackers know better, but a recent a short study looking at 29 IoT command control hosts, those are the ones that typically are used you know, for these Mirai-like bots that are preying on weak and default passwords. Well, uh, these 29 IoT command control servers used actually themselves pretty weak passwords, including a root password of root. The other passwords are a little bit better, but of course we have the typical 1337 or elite. And then the remainder is, I think the longest one I've seen here is eight characters, user 2019. Most everything else is three or four characters. And if you are using Amazon's S3 service, there used to be or still are, I believe up to this point, two different ways to actually reach a certain bucket. The first way is to use the bucket name as part of a path. And it would be s3.amazonaws.com slash, and then whatever the name is of your storage bucket, followed by the key. Well, Amazon is going to this to continue this path notation and instead it's going to require that you're using unique host names which would be bucket name dot s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash and then your access key now for most applications that should be a relatively straightforward switch however there are some issues with censorship it's much easier for a particular network to plot 
unlock certain host names. This can be done, for example, via DNS and such, and it's not quite as easy to block a particular URL. So historically, it was possible to avoid, for example, some country level firewalls and the like uh, by using the path based notation. On the other hand, of course, this can also be used to evade legitimate security filters and the like. So it's a little bit like domain fronting, but uh, maybe not quite as bad uh, given that you only have access to the files stored at that particular location. And I don't think uh, these requests would be forwarded to another site uh, as uh, what's happening with domain fronting that Amazon and other large cloud providers have disabled for a while now. Well, thanks for listening. This is it for today. I will be heading for San Diego this week. So if you're attending the conference there, say hi. I'll always have stickers on me. Also, end of the month, I'll be in San Antonio teaching intrusion detection in depth again. So hope to see some of you there. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.